hello everyone welcome back to another video welcome back this is the open door tv and for those of you who are new to this channel please hit that subscribe button on your way in and of course hit that notification bell make sure it's in all so that you can see whenever i post a new video today's video is going to be pretty short well not short short but i will try to make it as quickly as possible because i'm not gonna do too much talking on it um just briefly today's video is about the jesuits believe that Ellen white is the only prophet or the only true prophet in our time yet seventh day adventist or ditching her writing not take my for it let's get active right now i was i was in idaho last year and it was a mexican doctor that came to see me a lady and she said i have a practice down in mexico and my partner was approached by a catholic and said the bishop is dying of cancer but he knows you adventists have a special health message would you be willing to treat him the doctor said if on a condition that I can give the bishop Bible studies. I want to explain to him where that health message came from. And, she, and he went back and came back and said, the bishop says yes. Okay, send the bishop to my office. So the bishop started coming. He put him on a special plan, prayed with him, and pretty soon the cancer started to disappear. And eventually it totally disappeared. Amen. But now it's time for the doctor to knock by the house of the bishop. Hello, Brother Bishop, I am here to give you a Bible study. Can I come in? The bishop said, please do. You're welcome. They talked for a while and he said, okay, I'd like to, I'd like to discuss with you the spirit of prophecy and how it gave us the health message. Could I do that? The bishop said, yes, but before you do, could I show you something? Come, to, come with me to my library. So they went to the library. And on the library, all of the published writings of Ellen G. White. The doctor was stunned. Brother Bishop, how in the world do you have all these books? He said, and I've read every one of them too. You have. And what do you think about them? He said, I'm a Jesuit. It is my job to read everything. And I want you to know that we Jesuits believe that Ellen G. White is the only true prophet of any church today. Amen. And we believe everything she has written. And I will tell you another thing. That is why we don't want Seventh-day Adventists to believe anything that she writes. Because if they do, they will know everything we're doing and everything we're planning to do. This was a stunning news to our doctor. Um, so I'm going to pause it right here. We're not going to go to this one now. Uh, we're going to do that another time. So what you guys just heard is a Jesuit um, talking about the writings of Ellen Good White, Ellen G. White, before it was Ellen Harmon before she was married to James White. And if you guys know, most people do not know um, what a Jesuit is. Um, so they have a, a name, which you would think is about Jesus because it says Jesuit. In reality, the name is Society of Jesus. But is this the actual Jesus that most of us believe in? Or is it the facade of Jesus that they actually named themselves after. It's like saying Christmas is for Christ. No, Christmas has nothing to do with Christ. Christmas is a pagan holiday that the heathen used to do. And then the Vatican, people, the people system, said, you know what? Instead of just calling it um, by the pagan name, we're just going to use it and put Jesus lyrics on it and so 
we have that Christmas for Jesus Christ. In fact, it is not. Same way, Jesuits has nothing to do with Jesus. Now, they will say it has something to do with Jesus, but I want you to actually listen to this from the writings of Ellen White. Let's see what she actually says about the Jesuits or the order of the Jesuits. GC, Great Controversy. Um, GC 88 means Great Controversy 1888. I mean, that's the year was published. Page 234, paragraph 2. Throughout Christendom, okay, Protestantism was menaced by formidable foes. The first triumphs of the Reformation passed. Rome sum summoned new forces hoping to accomplish its destruction. At this time, the order of the Jesuits was created the most cruel, unscrupulous, and powerful of all the champions of popery. Why were they created? Well, let's see why. Cut off from every earthly tie and human interest, dead to the claims of natural affection, reason and conscience holy silence, they knew no rule, no tie, but that of their order, and no duty but to extend its power. What power? Popery. The Antichrist, man of sin, the system. Not the persons about the system. The gospel of Christ had enabled its adherents to meet danger and endure suffering, undismayed by cold, hunger, toil, and poverty, to uphold the banner of truth in face of the rack, the dungeon, and the stake. To combat these forces, which means because the papacy, the Catholic Church in Rome, used to just persecute, now instead of persecuting, they have to use a different tactic. That's why Satan, if he cannot, if he cannot destroy you with the tail, no, with the sword, then he goes to the tail. It's basically T. Tail is T I E L, meaning deception. To combat these forces. Jesuitism inspired its followers with a fanaticism that enabled them to endure like dangers and to oppose the power of truth of to oppose to the power of truth all the weapons of deception. Deception. Now that Satan cannot destroy it by sword, then he goes to the next wind, deception. He only has two ways either sword or deception. There was no crime too great for them to commit no deception to base for them to practice, no disguise too difficult for them to assume. Vowed to perpetual poverty and humility, it was their studied aim to secure wealth and power, to be devoted to the overthrow of Protestantism and the reestablishment of papal supremacy. And guess what? Pope Francis, who is a Jesuit, is doing just that right now. So, don't be surprised. Next paragraph, 3. When appearing as members of their order, they wore a garb of sanctity, so-called godliness, visiting prisons and hospitals, Pope Francis did just that, ministering to the sick and to the poor, again, professing to have renounced the world and bearing the sacred name of Jesus. That's why it's called Society of Jesus. It's a fake name under the assumption of Jesus, but not really, who went about doing good, but under this blameless exterior, which is why they call the Pope now from Antichrist to brother in Christ, yeah, but under the blameless exterior, the most criminal and deadly purposes were concealed. It was a fundamental principle of the order to, that the end justifies the means. By this code, lying, Theft, perjury, assassination were not only pardonable but commendable when they served the interests of the church. Under various disguises, the Jesuits worked their way into offices of state, climbing up to the counselors of kings and shaping the policy of the nations. They became servants, 
to act as spies upon their masters. They established colleges, the Georgetown. They established colleges for the sons of princes and nobles and schools for the common people. And the children of Protestant parents were drawn into an observance of popish rites. All the outward pomp and display of the Romish worship was brought oh my bad was brought to bear to confuse the mind and dazzle and and captivate the imagination and thus the liberty of for which the fathers have toiled and bled was betrayed by the sons. The Jesuits rapidly spread themselves over Europe and wherever they went there followed a revival of popery. And you cannot tell me at this time the United States was supposed to be the banner of Protestantism, meaning where freedom of liberty of religion was established. You can tell me that the US is going back to the papacy. See the Jesuits believe in the writing of Ellen White. Which I addressed to you as that's from Good Controversy by page two thirty four. The Jesuits believe in the writing of Ellen White, yet Seventh day Adventists are now confused whether she was inspired by God or the devil. They listen to people online who are making dumb videos and trying to misuse her writing, like Alan Paul, one of them. And there are other ones, but Alan Paul was the main one to be against Ellen White. And guess what? They are saying she is of the devil, yet the Jesuits who actually are of the devil, meaning not the people per se, but the system, those who actually live by the order of the Jesuits, they believe in the writings of Ellen White. And that's why they do not want seven Adventists like myself and like other ones to believe in the writing. Because if you believe that, what you just read on the order of the Jesuits, if you believe that, you will know they have no interest in the well-being of those who want to worship God as God asked them to. It's either you follow the way the church says or you are dead so guys i'm gonna stop it right here don't forget again to hit that subscribe button and that like button on the way out it was again to for tv hope to see you guys again until then bye for now